welcome you all to my new YouTube channel CS Net Lectures. You may all may be wondering for what purpose this channel has been created, right? The main intention of creating this channel is to help the students present in various parts who are preparing for the net set and PGTRT examinations and also for the students who are putting up their effort and writing the college level semester examinations. Okay, now I'm going to tell you what the objective here. The objective here is we are going to make a smart work preparation of the syllabus. The syllabus here what we are going to discuss is that it is computer science. So we are going to discuss or uh, see all the subject areas related to that of computer science. Uh, another one thing is that as I told, we are going to do a smart work study. So, how we are going to carry it over? So, the smart work study is in the sense that uh, when you visualize all the uh, subject areas that are present in the government uh, examination point of view, the topics, the headings and the main subjects all will be more or less similar. Okay, so there will not be any uniqueness or peculiarity that is, uh, will be present in those uh, subheadings or topics that is being present under each and every subjects. So, based on the common questions that are being asked for three to four years in the previous question papers of all the types of government examinations, we are going to extract those important uh, areas of topics from these all common subjects. And what we are going to do is, we are going to get a complete training uh, and practice so that in the future exam, suppose the same question is being asked, okay, we can easily uh, answer the questions without having any oscillations in our mind. Another thing is that here, we are not only going to discuss only on the single sub subject of computer science, here we are going to discuss all the subjects. For example, starting from data structures, computer system architecture, uh, database management system, operating system, and uh, computer networks, and so on. When you uh, jump into the syllabus, you will be able to find out there are many uh, enormous areas. Okay, so if you go and study all the topics very deeply, it is very tedious for us to keep that in our mind. So, here we are going to gain the knowledge smartly. Right? Clear? Okay, so now we can go into our uh, discussion. Uh, first and foremost, here we are going to discuss about the subject called as data structures. Okay, so this is our first video. We will have a small introduction about this topic. Clear? So now, uh, what is the essentiality of studying the data structure and how it is used for? So data structure is mainly used for structuring the data. So, from the subject name itself, we can uh, get a partial understanding about uh, what we are going to do with it. Okay. So, in a day-to-day -day life, if we see, we are going to handle vast and vast amount of data of different types. Okay. So, our system is going to store the data and it is going to retrieve the data back to us. So, how it is going to get stored in the system? What are the different procedures we are using for storing it? All those things we are going to implement it in our data structure subject. Okay, so the main uh, meaning of data structure is we are going to handle the data. That is handling in the sense we are going to organize the data. That is organization of data is possible in data structures. So once we have stored the data by using some procedures, uh, that is in future we may have to retrieve it. So, for that purpose also, we are using some implementation procedures and functionalities. So, the next is we are going to store the data and then the stored uh, data is to be retrieved by using some set of algorithms or some procedures as I told before. So, data structure is we are going to organize the data and store and retrieve the data. So this is the main meaning of data structures and friends, as I already told uh, in our uh, channel, we are not going to discuss uh, in a detailed manner. I am going to give you as a hint. So if possible, you take a pen and a note and you can note it down. So in future, it will be very helpful for you. Okay, so uh, now we can go. So in data structures, we are going to 
organize the data, store and retrieve the data. Clear? So for this, we are going to use some set of algorithmic procedures for doing those operations. Okay. So as I told, in a system, we are going to handle different types of data. Okay. So what is a data? Okay. So what is the meaning of data? So data may be a number or it may be an alphabet or it may be any uh, symbols or combination of all these things. Okay. So for example, uh, it may be a 10 dollar symbol percentage dot so these are some of a collection of data okay so we are going to handle these data okay so what is uh, the type of this data so this type of data is we can tell it is a character okay so what is this 10 so 10 may be referred as a number okay so what is this dollar dollar and this is some sort of a Some sort of a symbol. So, in this data structures, we are going to organize all these types of data in a memory. Okay, how it is going to get stored? So that we are going to discuss it in the future. That is the main thing is we are going to handle the memory for storing these type of data. Okay, so you see the characters, numbers, and symbols are all of different types. Okay, so I think you may be knowing integer, float, character, string. Okay, so the next thing what I am going to tell you is these are collection of various types of data. So we are going to manage these types. Okay, so uh, these types are being categorized in data structure as primitive data type and non-primitive data type. Okay, so primitive data type and non-primitive data type. So what is the meaning of primitive? So primitive is nothing but we are going to tell us a default data type. Okay, so what is the meaning of default data type? So in this data structure, for example, while you are going to program or while you are going to code a program, you will be defining some alphabets. Okay, so you will be mentioning it as character or you will be mentioning it as integer b. Or you will be mentioning it as boolean x. So like this you will be mentioning or giving a data type for each and every variable. Okay. So what will happen is that you didn't want to worry about whether this data type will be assigned or, or we will start to develop those data types for my program. So this data structure what it will do is it will automatically create the respective data type what it have mentioned okay so the functions uh, for the respective numbers for the respective characters for boolean everything is inbuilt inside the data structures so the users or the customers are going to use directly on the data what they are going to use it here the data is b x and the inbuilt uh, data type is integer and boolean so the system is having its own Code so that we didn't want to worry whether it will be used as a boolean or whether it will be used as a integer. Okay, so those types of data structure which has its own inbuilt functions are called as primitive data type. So primitive is something default. So as I told, default is the type is inbuilt. Okay, so next we will see what is a non-primitive data type okay so before going to, into this i will tell you some of the examples of primitive data type so the inbuilt uh, data types present are integer float character and boolean okay so these are some of the inbuilt data structure Inbuilt data type present in the primitive data structure. Okay, you just kindly make a note of it on this example INTP Boolean X. Okay, so next we will go for non primitive data type. So the meaning of non primitive is it is a user defined. Uh, okay, 
So in the meaning of non-primitive is we are going to create a user-defined data type. That is, uh, in non-primitive, we are going to store a collection of values in a single variable. But in primitive, if you see, in a single variable, we can store only a single value. Okay, so let me uh, explain you with a uh, clear uh, difference. Okay, so for example, uh, you take for a primitive. So for primitive, I am <coughs> declaring a variable as A over the data type as an integer. Since it is a default data type, I am going to assign the value as 10. So it will be creating a one memory space. In that one memory space, we are going to store a value as 10. So after a certain amount of operations, I am going to store the value as 22. So what will happen is, the previous value will be erased. In the memory space, in the same memory space, this 10 will be replaced with that of 20. Okay, so that is the main uh, thing of primitive data type. But in non-primitive, we, if we use as a non-primitive, for this variable A, I can able to store A is equal to 30, A is equal to 40, as much as possible. So for a single variable, I can store multiple values. Under this non-primitive, you have two types, linear and non-linear. Okay, so what is the meaning of linear is sequential. So what is the meaning of non-linear? So non-linear is random. That is, we are going to store the values of a single variable in a sequence manner. That is, the memory allocation or the addresses of the memory will be allotted to that variable sequentially. But here in non-linear, uh, the collection of values are going to store under a single variable in different memory locations. That is, the addresses of the memory will be different. We may, we may not be able to find out the exact address of that variable. Okay, that is called as a non-linear. So under this linear, we have two types, static and dynamic. So what is the meaning of static? So static is fixed. So what is the meaning of dynamic? So dynamic is very. We can change. Okay, so the static will work at compile time. This dynamic will work at jump time. So, uh, what is the meaning of static now? Fixed. So, the variable will be given only a fixed amount of memory. Okay. So, after the compile time, suppose if you attempt to change the memory of the variable, it will not accept, it will produce the error. But, it is opposite in the case of dynamic. So after compilation and at runtime, we have the ability to change the size of the memory. Okay, even at runtime, we can store as much amount of values that we need for the variable in dynamic. Okay, so under this array, no, sorry, under this static, we have an example of arrays. Under dynamic, we have three types, stacks, queues, and linked list. Okay, so these are all very vast topic. So, uh, under this uh, video session, we cannot be able to complete it. We will have an introduction about these things. Okay. So, now, uh, <clears throat> under non-linear, I have already explained you what is the meaning of non-linear. We have two types, graphs and trees. So, everybody know what is the meaning of an array. Okay. So, array will be like this. I am D, A of 10. Suppose if you give this. Uh, this variable A is going to hold 10 elements. Okay, so after uh, fixing the value, we cannot be able to change its size. What is the meaning of array? Mm -hmm. So here, stack, queues and linked list, we are also the same, but we can be able to change the size of the variable. So stack works under the concept of last in, first out method. Q works under the concept of first in, first out method. So this works under the concept of node and pointer representation. 
So what is stack? So stack is a dynamic representation. So once the values are uh, being stored, so we can able to retrieve it from the topmost area. Okay, but in queue, it is a first in first one method. The first value which is being stored in the queue, only that will be removed or deleted. In linked list, we are going to represent using this manner. So node is the, and we are going to store the value. So this pointer is going to point to the next memory location, having the data on the pointer. Okay, so this is, this is a sequence representation of this linked list. Okay, so next is nonlinear. So graph, we are using graphical representation of sodium elements by having modes and vertices, trees. So trees is going to have this hierarchical representation having a root node and its subnodes with having this edges um, pointing to the respective values. Okay, so if you see uh, the representation will be at random. Okay, so all these things we are going to see it in a uh, deep manner in future. So that's all about uh, the different data types that is being used in data structures. Okay, so now can you understand? Uh, friends, suppose if you are going to tell me any comments, uh, let, you, let me know so that I can able to modify it in the future. Thanks for watching. Thank you.